Okay, so on this problem, I think this is number four from your homework. Uh, you may be a little bit intimidated by it, but the good news is it is actually not nearly as hard as you would like to make it. Um, the first thing you're really asked to do here is to um, consider a, a logistic-like model, except that we've added now this H term. This is for the fish that are being harvested from the fishery per unit time. So we're going to take out this H at a fixed rate from the population. We're given some information to plug in, so what we actually have here is a dp dt is equal to population times a 3 for a minus 1b, or sorry, 1 is b, so that's going to be minus 1 times p, and then minus an h, which is 9 fourths. Okay, and we're also told that p at 0 is p naught. Now the first thing you're asked to do is con to, uh, to construct a face portrait. So to do a face portrait, remember uh, what we do there is find the critical points. And critical points are where the right-hand side of this autonomous differential equation happened to be zero. So I'd said p times 3 minus p uh, minus 9 fourths equal to zero. And this is the first place where we're going to see something interesting happening. In particular, um, when I multiply out this p times the 3 minus uh, p, I get 3p minus p squared minus 9 fourths equals 0. Now, if I write this in descending order, I've got a minus p squared plus 3p uh, minus 9 fourths. Now, what I really want to do here is I want to change all these signs. I want to make this positive make this minus and make this positive. Uh, what I'm essentially doing is multiplying through by a negative 1. And the reason I do that is because that gives me p squared minus 3p plus 9 fourths, which uh, if you look closely at that, that is actually something that's factorable. 9 fourths equals 0. This turns out to be p minus 3 halves times p minus 3 halves. It's p minus 3 halves squared, which means that, uh, and double check that, if you multiply that out, notice you do in fact get that line right there. That means we have a single solution. p is equal to 3 halves is the solution, is the only critical point. So on a phase portrait, we would have just 3 halves and now we want to know what's happening up here above this point and what's happening below this point so you know say we consider a point up here value of two right that's greater than three halves if I plug in two for P into this equation up here I have two times three minus two minus nine fourths which gives me two times a one or two minus nine fourths that's eight fourths minus nine-fourths is negative one-fourth, which means I'm going down up here. Now if I plug in something down here, like say zero, I would have zero times three minus zero minus nine-fourths. Okay, and that's also going to be negative, which means I'm going downhill down here as well. Okay. So, because you get 0 times 3, which is 0, minus 9 fourths, which is a negative 9 fourths. Okay, so the question that you are asked over on WebAssign is to determine basically the long term behavior. Now, because 3 halves is a critical point, I lost my pointer, there it is, we'll never cross this value. So, if you start somewhere up here, you're going to always be decreasing. You're going to approximate that. The question is whether or not this thing ever becomes extinct. Does it ever actually reach zero? Since this is decreasing forever, but it can't cross three halves, then up here it does not become extinct. That is, meaning your population doesn't go to zero because it can never get down here to zero. But on the other hand, if you're down here, you're going to go down here forever, right? Then at some point in each of these cases, here's the zero line, you're going to hit 
depending on where you start, right, if this is your P0, then you're eventually going to hit the x-axis, the, the zero, okay? But that's not going to happen up here. So it's extinct down here when, be, I guess I should say it becomes extinct when P0 is less than three halves. Okay, and that's going to depend on you know this number and this number right here in the original problem as to what you actually get here. But it only becomes extinct when your initial condition is less than three halves. The second question that you are asked is to find when it becomes extinct, and the only way to do that is to solve this differential equa equation right here. So that's what I'm going to do next. I'm going to come down here. I'm going to scroll down a little bit, and I'm going to rewrite my differential equation: dp dt equals p times 3 minus p minus 9 fourths and I want to solve the DE. It's separable in the same way that the original logistic equation was separable so I get DP divided by p times 3 minus p minus 9 fourths. I have to divide everything across and I move my dt to the other side so equals dt. Now this down here remember became a minus p squared plus 3p minus 9 fourths which I want to factor out a minus sign it gives me p squared minus 3p plus 9 fourths which then factors to p minus three halves quantity squared. And so, if I move the minus sign at the top, but I've got a negative dp divided by p minus three halves squared, and I integrate on the left-hand side, integrate on the right-hand side, uh, dt. And what that gives me is, I can use a u substitution here, p minus three halves, you know, du is just going to be dp, so I get a minus, and then when I integrate, this is uh, u to the minus 2 integral du, add one to that, divide by it, a minus, and a minus becomes a plus natural log of p minus 3 halves, not natural log, try that again, is actually just, this becomes so I've got this minus here, so there's a minus here, I get u to the minus 1. Or 1 over u. Or 1 over p minus 3 halves. So 1 over p minus 3 halves is equal to t plus c. Or, invert both sides, I get p minus 3 halves is 1 over t plus c, which gives me p is 1 over t plus c minus plus actually 3 halves. Okay, then we're going to use, I'm going to come back up here and say now use p of 0 equals p naught to find c. So we have p naught is equal to 1 over c plus 3 halves. So if I subtract that to the other side, I have p naught minus 3 halves is equal to 1 over c. This, by the way, is 2 p naught minus 3 over 2 equals c. So invert and multiply c. Sorry, 1 over c here. So c is the reciprocal of the left hand side, 2 over 2 p naught minus 3. So that means altogether, I can come down here and say, plug that in there, p of t would be 1 over t plus 2 over 2p naught minus 3 plus 3 halves. Uh, a little bit of algebraic simplifying. I would put this t uh, times 2p naught minus 3 over 2p naught minus 3, and then this becomes 2p naught minus 3 
over t times 2 p naught minus 3 plus a 2, all plus 3 halves. There's your p of t. The question is, when does that equal 0? So we set that equal to 0. Okay? And we're going to solve then for t. 2 p naught minus 3 over t times 2 p naught minus 3 plus 2. Move the 3 halves to the side so you get negative 3 halves. Oh, sorry. Try that again. Uh, multiply both sides by t to p naught minus 3 plus 2. So 2 p naught minus 3 equals a negative 3 halves times a t times 2 p naught minus 3 plus 2. I'm going to distribute this to both of those. And I get 2 p naught minus 3 equals a negative 3 halves t times 2 p naught minus 3 minus 3. So add 3 to both sides. Those are gone. And then I'm going to multiply both sides by a negative 2 thirds and divide both sides by 2 p naught minus 3. I have a t on the left hand side equals, um, that's a, now if negative 4 p naught over 3 times 2 p naught minus 3. And that is the time when it becomes extinct.